How's it going everyone? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we are going to be talking about Trace Labs. So many of you know I participate in Trace Labs but if you're new here Trace Labs is a CTF, a capture the flag, that is hosted well by the organization named Trace Labs and the whole goal of this is to use crowdsourced open source intelligence or OSINT to find actual missing people. Now I'm on a team typically called Arco Squad. This year we were team okay. Uh, we just, I, I, I literally just went into DEF CON. I asked someone for a team name and they said, okay. And I'm like, all right. And that was the team name. We scored third overall. I don't know how many teams there were. Uh, last year when we participated, we actually found a missing child. When I say we, specifically my fiance who is on my team found a missing child online. Uh, and the missing child's case got closed out by st the state police. I have a whole video about that right up here if you want to check that out. But anyways, we're going to recap this year's Trace Labs. Uh, I'm going to be looking on my screen. I'll add some extra tidbits uh, because I'm obviously going to have to censor a lot of this stuff because this person is still missing and still wanted by police. I want to say wanted. That's the wrong term. People disappear willingly just because they want to start a new life or whatever the case i'm not going to say wanted but they are missing and their family is in need of them so the trace labs format basically it starts out at like a certain time people play all around the world and everyone is basically trying to find the same exact people so in this case i think we had like 1600 people in the discord channel uh, for this year's CTF. So at any given moment, these four missing people had 1,600 people that have varying levels of skills when it comes to OSINT. Uh, and we basically all collectively submitted information to Trace Labs to for, for Trace Labs to then hand off to law enforcement so they can beef up their investigation and such like that. So this year we had four people. They were all based in the United States. And the way my team worked, we were all MVOs. So we've all been awarded the most valuable OSINT uh, award. So like, again, uh, my fiance was the one that found the missing child last year at DEF CON and I was on the same team. Uh, so I also got the MVO. Uh, and my other two team members, uh, Jake Kreps, I'm sure you've seen that name before in the OSINT community, as well as Sin. I'll put links to their social media down below, but four of us were on the same team and I think we did pretty damn well. Um, so for me personally, I only focused on one individual. Uh, this one person, I'm not gonna get too gra or not, not graphic, uh, well in depth about them because they are still needed by uh, police. However, I can give some basic general characteristics about the person. So again, wanted, not wanted, missing in the United States. Uh, they were originally from the Midwest and they somehow ended up over into uh, the West side of the United States. And the information that police had on the poster, the missing persons poster was that they had a bunch of tattoos. Uh, they were male and, that, and they had like an alias and that's about it. Nothing else. The, 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 I'm not kidding. Like the description of the tattoos is lots of tattoos and, but they didn't really have much else. So we got a name, a general idea of what they look like from, you know, the, the posters that were put out and that's it. That's all you get in a trace labs event. I'm not kidding. Like I'll put an example of missing persons poster. That's all you, that's all we get. So I went ahead and I start with the most basic way you would find a missing person. Now, um, this will really depend on the age. Trace labs will vary in range. It could be from people that are in their, you know, 80s. It could be literal children. Uh, I believe this year there were a couple children uh, that were missing. I, I didn't look into them. I don't know their ages, but you got to start your OSINT and tailor your OSINT based on that demographic because people that are, you know, in their 80s are going to be using Facebook more than six-year-olds. So... In my case, this individual was, um, let's just say, born in the 80s. Uh, so their their age demographic would typically lean towards using Facebook, not so much TikTok. It'd be like Facebook, Instagram, um, and Twitter. That's kind of like that age group's social media. So I started out with Facebook. That's kind of an easy layup. Uh, Facebook has varying levels, varying levels of privacy depending on how you use Facebook. 
and I'm gonna be looking on my screen right here actually to find, uh, to kind of recreate how I found this missing person. Not found, sorry, not found. How I started my investigation on this particular missing person. I'm basically recreating what I did. I also filmed bits of um, like the actual CTF. I'll throw that in there as we go. Um, just because well, it's, it's like real reactions. Like I filmed pretty much the entire CTF. Okay. So I started out with their name. They, we gave, they gave us their real name. Um, so their full name when they were last seen. Um, and yes, that's it. And then we got uh, last known location, approximate age, uh, gender, height, weight, and then distinguishing features. It says tattoos all over and injured, just an injured body part. That's about it. That's so all we I'm got. I'm currently looking at the like missing persons poster to, uh, sorry, I like lost my train of thought. I already found some points. Um, okay, so I got some very distinct information about this person already. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and submit points. So some good pivots on this is I'll be looking at shares. Um, people that shared like the missing, missing person. Some of the nicknames or some of the names people use on Facebook that like aren't their real names like in this case this person's like name is something beast um this guy does not have like a facebook account or anything like that so this would be like he has like a tag handle it seems like it's a tagger handle TikTok. oh my lord let's see what we got here the best of my abilities. This is not a conspiracy theory. I'm not making it. Kaila <laughs> Cherro. Okay, that's alien. Found their sister. So I went ahead, look up the name and on Facebook, what you could do is like, typically if you search the person's name uh, that's missing and you throw their name in quotes or whatever, you'll tip you and you filter by, uh, let's, let's just do this. I'm going to copy their full name right now and see if I can pull it up. Cause I, I don't want to like, this was yesterday and so much has happened since yesterday. Um, okay. So when you look up when I look up this missing person's name uh, on Facebook, you, on the left, you have filters. And that is actually a very powerful tool when you're looking for missing people is because on the left over here, you have all posts, people, photos, videos, marketplace, and so on. I went ahead and clicked on posts and you could filter when you click on posts, you could do like recent posts and such like that. Um, in this case, uh, there was one right here shared by what seemed to be either a friend or a family member. And it says, if anyone has seen blank, uh, often goes by, and then it's their street name, uh, you know, their height and weight, uh, hasn't been heard from since this day. And then it's a picture of the missing person and their child. Um, and that's about it. Um, that's what I got. I'm not kidding. It's just a person with a public post stating this person's name. Uh, and then the date they went missing. Most recent local rap community. I don't know what this is going to yield at all. So I think a good place to start with trying to find like rap groups, if that's even really a thing, is uh, YouTube and TikTok. That's where I would go personally. It's a place with some big cheese. We over at the punch line tonight. I'm with my man. Who is this right here in the back? Oh, man, they look like West care. Baltimore's finest, goddammit. <laughs> West Baltimore's finest, goddammit. <laughs> Blaze talk, Grease talk, nigga. We finna turn this motherfucker up. Let's get this. All right. 
I told you run that resume, cause ain't no real niggas left. My brother's 6'3 with 33. Shooting like he's deaf. Mama house with I. Finna let him cram. Posted at his mama house with I. Finna do my dance. I don't think that's him, because, uh, well, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna find this guy in this rapper. This, this, just using previous experience with some rappers, uh, this group is a different kind of rap group than what this particular MP might be associated with. Mainly because, like, these videos I've been watching have been street takeovers and stuff like that. I don't think this guy is necessarily doing that. The crowd that part partakes on that are like between ages fucking six and 20, maybe. Hooker Row is gone. Whoa. Oh shit. I found a video of it? No way. I found his YouTube. Hey, titties. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are cooking with gas right now. I have. MP's rap channel. So we got a lot going on here. We got a lot going on here. Um, so we'll do basic subject info maybe. So I then took this this person, I'm gonna say it's a bro or a sister, and they said this person often goes by this street name. So I took that street name and then put the activity that they have that street name with, and I found lots and lots of YouTube videos. I let them know what the fuck is up. Ha ha! Ain't nobody knew it. Had an AK pulled on me, homie. I said, go to shoot it. Alright, I guess I can put these other rappers as like affiliates of him. Checking out another fellow rapper in the area. Let's see what we got here. Rappers, you know, there's a reason why I like to do OSINT on them. Just cause, you know. What was the Facebook account you found? Was it named- And you submitted that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Google dork her name and LinkedIn, you might be able to get her profile, uh, profile pic. Because they'll typically, like, if you're not connected, it won't show a profile pic, but if you Google dork it, you can find it. So this is pretty much what I'm stuck doing right now, is I'm going through all of the friends list stuff right here, and, uh... Once I get on their profiles, I'm like searching this guy's name, the MP's name, uh, to see if he's commented on any of the other photos. And one less automated way to go about this, less programmatic way, I guess, is to actually go through uh, posts that were after his missing date and uh, see if he's reacted to any of those photos, which that will be very time consuming, but that is lots of points and good intel shows that he's alive at least up until that point uh, so I'm gonna go with my method of going with people that have heart reacted and just other reactions other than a thumbs up on on Facebook just because I don't know I just feel like that makes more sense so that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing so I'm gonna be going each an individual one looking up MPs name it's also really nice that everyone's Facebook is so poorly protected. I just started listening to them. So I spent most of my trace, practically all of my trace labs yesterday, listening to this guy rap and just listening. That's all. I started listening and I started listening to lyrics and it started to really paint a picture about this person's, you know, history. Uh, a lot of the points that I actually got awarded for actually listening to this person's rap was advanced subject info, info, so things that could be like mental health problems or, you know, abuse problems. 
or anything that is not basic stuff like their social media and stuff like that like this kind of intel i've never done before and that's audio intel so listen to all of it i got a really solid picture about the potential places this guy could have went missing in um you know he went missing in this city and you know people are searching in this city but if you listen to this guy's music like he's not here he is where he's rapping about uh more than likely so that's kind of where i focused my uh kind of intelligence efforts going forward it's like okay well i'm not gonna look in this particular area anymore i'm gonna start focusing in like all the facebook accounts that i'm gonna be you know searching through um, I'm only going to focus in that particular city because that might lead to more information. And that's what I did. Um, I found a lot of this particular person's close affiliates doing that. Um, and some of these, some of these rap videos, he calls people out like a lot of rap videos that, you know, they call out their label or they call out whatever. This guy calls out a lot of people and I was able to take those names that they called out and find way more information about this guy, like workout videos, fight videos. Um, I, I mean, I don't even know how to like just the amount of information, the high quality videos that we got, uh, because the police didn't really have a really good description of, you know, the tattoos this guy had. Well, found these fight videos and, you know, they're like six minutes long. It's like, okay, well, he has this tattoo here. He has this tattoo there. Uh, a piercing here, th this, 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 this. Um, and then I found, you know, after doing all of that uh, and finding these like DJ or not DJs, but other rappers this guy calls out, I was then able to find his Facebook account, which obviously does not use his real name, uses his street name, but in a different manner, I guess. It's like kind of in a different way that was advertised. Um, like I said, this person had multiple aliases, um, and that was their Facebook name. And now I'm going to go back to their Facebook page. And then from here, we could see their last post on Facebook. Um, we can see likes, reactions, and then again, videos. And this guy has so many videos, working out, boxing um, lots of boxing videos. And then one of the live streams, um, I don't know where this, I found the live stream. I think it was like a friend of this particular account that tagged them. And it was him walking in the city that they were missing in. So, or they were last reported in. Um, and you could see like, they're like on a Facebook live stream. They're like moving back and forth. I didn't use like any stitching. I think there's a uh, a tool called Invid you can use where you can basically take, you know, pictures from like a, a frame and kind of stitch them together to kind of like get a better picture. I, I recognized it, the, the skyline in the back and I'm like, all right, well, that's where this video was taken. Um, but in here, like I'm, I'm, go I'm going to play one of the songs, uh, and I'm going to mute it on my mic, but so it, it, the whole rap song is just like reminiscing on his past. And so like the determination that my fiance kind of made, and I also think is this guy probably checked into rehab somewhere just because in that one song, he raps about all the abuse problems that he personally has. Um, that's my guess. That's what happened to this guy. We also found that he's been missing a few times in the past, um, which is not uncommon with these cases, especially like younger people. They, you know, they're, they're runaways. They run away for like a week and then they come back. Um, but we didn't find him. I Most of the time in Trace Labs, I don't know how many times a like a missing person has been located, like somewhat present. I know for us last year, we like to like, minus a day before the event that we found this child, you know, way off, uh, in the yonder where they were missing, uh, but they were safe. I don't know. Most of the time that doesn't happen. This particular trace labs though, uh, one of the, um, missing individuals was founded or found on an escort site. So if you don't know what escort sites are, it's like to purchase sex or 
and in, in theory it's to have a companion around you and, and and sex and all that stuff is on the table um so yeah i'm just trying to see like if there was anything else in here like the main bit of osent that i used on this particular individual is listening to their music um other things i was like looking for uh given the community this person was in like if they had any graffiti tags or anything like that and i started like looking in known areas or areas i suspected they might have been in see if there's any tagging or anything like that watching some videos on youtube uh couldn't find anything that's kind of like a long shot but like could have been fruitful if they were known to be like a graffiti artist um yeah i'm still going through and like they screenshot like pictures from instagram using a former handle of theirs and that didn't really end up to be super fruitful uh, other than the fact that like brought me to a YouTube video that was like 13 minutes long that was pretty much the same thing that this missing person was saying over and over again like every six seconds but in a different context I don't know how to explain it Let's just to say that the CTF yesterday wasn't hard as far as finding Intel it was hard because I sat through hours of soundcloud rap and that i don't know how to explain it <clears throat> uh anyways that's kind of it i'll put screenshots in this video uh but that was kind of my wrap up i i can't speak for my fiance or the other individuals on my team uh i know jake Kreps is going to be uh doing a, a write-up soon so whenever that's posted i'll share it in the link down below but anyways uh if you're watching this video um you know, new Discord link is down below. Also, shout out to my uh, latest subscriber, Jack Reciter from Darknet Diaries. Hello. Hopefully you made it this far. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, if you're interested in doing Trace Labs in the future, they do uh, contests about maybe three times a year. It's not very often, but um, they could always use contestants to actually find missing people. They could always use volunteers to help judge the intelligence coming in. Uh, because I'm sure you could guess, you know, when you have 1,500 people doing a CTF and all of the information, you know, each person, I would say, like, for me personally, I've probably submitted about 30 pieces of intelligence yesterday. So you multiply that by 1,500, you know, let's just say an average of 10. That's 15,000 pieces of intel. Uh, that's quite a bit to sift through in a few hours. So shout, I mean, kudos to Trace Labs. They consistently always host quality events. And, you know, at the end of the day, even if you don't like score super high, um, you're doing a great thing. It's a, it's a, it's a noble thing to do. So I, I, I want to thank everyone that does it. I want to thank Trace Labs, uh, the MVO team that, you know, found this, uh, person that could have been trafficked or slash, uh, you know, on an escort site. Um, and my judge phenomenal very responsive um again i'll get to the i guess i'll make a, a you know maybe a youtube short or whatever about like tips for trace labs uh just so you could get you know better uh better findings submitting results that always not always but for the most part get accepted uh because you'll see if you do trace labs and you submit stuff and you provide shit until they will deny it uh for very very valid reasons so anyways that is it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button with the bell notification <laughs> notification, so you can get notified anytime I post a new video. So I'll be doing a Trace Labs, like a further Trace Labs video, and then a DEF CON recap. There's a lot of hot takes about DEF CON this year. Um, and then I start my new job tomorrow. I'll be doing cybersecurity at a coffee company. Sounds fun, huh? So anyways, that is it for this video. Y'all take care. Goodbye.